Hey everyone, it's Nashwalk Steve here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a platform like this so you can have elevated seating in your house for a theater or whatever else you might need it for. I'll take you through the design of the project, through construction, and looking at how the final product operates. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. All right, one of the first things you wanna do to get the size for your platform is um, draw up what your current furniture or the furniture you're going to be using will look like. Um, most importantly in its reclined state. So uh, what I have here, I looked at the specs for what we're going to be buying and um, the important uh, dimension here is the fully reclined length. So for the sofa that's going to be on the back, in the back on the platform, that's a reclined length of 69 inches. And then the front one, uh, it's going to be a recliner, a reclining chair, it has 66 inches um, fully reclined length. That's not the most important uh, dimension for this one, but back here what we need to look at is when this is fully reclined, um, how much space do we need between the top or the head of the uh, recliner in front of it and the foot rest as it comes out. Um, so here we're looking at 69 inches, but there's also to account for here, there's a di distance from the wall to the back of the furniture that accounts for um, the reclining action of the head here. So when this is um, fully reclined, it extends three inches beyond the base of the furniture. So if you were up against a wall, you'd need to be three inches away to allow for that room. Um, that's important on the front piece of furniture because wherever we set it, we need to account for there being three inches behind the piece of furniture um, where that's gonna recline to. So what I did here, looked at the fully reclined length of 69 inches. I wanna have six inches between the foot and the head of the um, recliner in front of it. And that has a distance from the wall to the furniture of three inches. So taking this all in total, I have 69 inches, but three of those inches are going to be the gap here that I don't need to have a platform over. So I can make that basically 66 inches. Then I need to add nine inches to that, six inches for the gap, and then three inches to account for um, the lean back on the recliner. So you get a total of 75 inches. So that shows me that my platform is going to be 96 inches by 75 inches. I came up with 96 because the um, so far we're using is 91 inches wide. Uh, my plywood or my OSB comes in 96 inch, you know, a sheet like that, four by eight. So that just seems like a convenient size and it gives you a little bit of room on either side um, for someone to step up there or uh, what have you. If you want to put a drink holder of, or some sort on an end or both, you'll have room to do that. So we get that dimension, 96 by 75. Now let me know that. The next thing to do is to draw up a quick sketch of what your platform is going to look like. So I am going to be building mine out of two by eights because I'm looking for about an eight inch um, elevation on the platform. Uh, a two by eight is seven and one quarter inches wide. So that'll give me seven and a quarter inches plus a three quarter inch piece of OSB on top gives me eight inches of rise total. Um, so this is a pretty easy layout to do. Being it's 96 inches, you can just go with 24 inch on center spacing between each of your members. Uh, and then looking at this 75 inch dimension here, subtract three inches for the thicknesses of the top two and top and bottom piece here and you get 72 inches per piece. So it's probably over designed quite a bit. It'll be very sturdy, but uh, I want it to have a good feel for when you're on it. If kids are walking across it or jumping on it, that it won't have much give to it. So that's what we're going to go ahead and cut the lumber to and assemble. Okay, once you've got your pieces cut out for your platform, go ahead and lay them out uh, where it's going to go. And I, on mine, I went ahead and I marked out my spacing. Every two feet, I put some lines there so I know where I'm going to line these things up at. And then I'm going to use the pneumatic uh, framing nailer. If you have three inch screws or, or even just want to pound in sinker nails, you can do that too. So we'll go ahead and assemble it per the drawing we made up and go from there. The next thing you'll do once you've assembled your frame is take the uh, plywood or OSB, whatever topping um, sheets you have, and put them on there. I'm using, again, three quarter inch OSB. Um, I've got my full 4x8 sheet here, and then I had to cut one down to 27 inches to make it a full 75 inches across. Um, if you lay your sheet on there and it doesn't seem to line up squarely, it means your frame is just out of square a little bit. So use trust the plywood um, for right angles and make your frame line up to that, and then go ahead and start screwing it in or nailing it. I'm doing a little bit of both. I'm putting screws at first, and I'll come back through um, with the pneumatic framing nailer and nail it all in. And... That should be pretty close to it for the structure. We'll go ahead and put that second sheet on and get that all nailed in. Now that the platform is built, um, everything's attached with nails and screws, um, 
we're doing some carpet pad on top of it. So I just went to Lowe's and picked up kind of the cheapest carpet pad for like 75 cents a square foot and uh, started stapling it on here. I'm just using a mechanical stapler at this point because you don't need the pneumatic power to get through this stuff. It, it'll probably tear through. So you can cut it with either a utility blade or a scissors as we have here. And it's going through and just kind of wrapping it. It comes in six foot wide rolls. So um, you have to splice together whatever you can. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this up and then we can start putting the carpet on it. All right, once the carpet pad is all stapled down and we started wrapping it with carpet here, uh, we started on this side, kind of lined it up with that edge and used the pneumatic one inch staples and then roll, and kind of wrapped it around to the other side, um, leaving these corners here yet to be done. I'm gonna kind of do some uh, finagling there, cutting it back a little bit and folding it over to make a nice corner. Um, but for now, we kind of have it set up like that. We're gonna go ahead and finish trimming it around the edges and work on those corners. All right, here's the corners that we're doing. Um, the first one is back there and looks really good. So we're gonna copy the same thing here. Um, what, we'll, what we'll end up doing is cutting this fabric straight down here about an inch and a half or two in from the corner. And then I can wrap this around neatly like that. And you'll just kind of see how we can make that corner work. I'll videotape what I do this next time so you can see um, each step of the process. So it'll start by stapling this in tight here and then cutting here and wrapping it. So here's the theater platform completed and outfitted with furniture finally. So this is what it looks like. For the design, there's some room here for people to walk through and for reclining to work out without any conflict of you know feet and heads. I can show that here. We designed there to be a small space when someone's reclined here and when someone is reclined here. So you can see there, that's no problem. So it worked out as we designed it. So it's uh, now ready to be used as a theater. So hopefully this helps you out if you're planning on doing some sort of modification to make a theater or just a platform for anything in general. Hopefully this helps you out. So now we'll show what this looks like fully completed here. Time to enjoy the movie.